Today I'm going to show you how I screen the compost to get our finished compost product. And that's what this is. This has already gone through not just the processing and curing, but I've screened it and I will sell it uh, very soon. You can see there are still some pieces of, uh, some small pieces of wood that get through the screen, but it's a really good product and we always sell out. Okay, let me show you what it looks like before it goes through the screener. All of this material here is finished processing and finished curing, but it hasn't been screened. You can see it has a lot of big pieces, big pieces of wood, big pieces of bone, right? And even because of the surface we're dealing with when we're curing, it even has some uh, brick pieces because of the brick company that owned this property before. All this we're gonna screen out uh, and show you how we do that. Um, it also helps us get uh, contamination out, plastic and things like that. Now, this unscreened compost has been uh, sitting here, and I don't know if you can really see, but it's uh, got a high moisture content, so it's kind of sticky and clumpy, and it will not pass through uh, the screen well. So before we screen it, we spread it out on the pad like this. Try to get it about four to six inches high. We spread it out, we let it dry, then we use the machine, the skid steer, to uh, turn it a little bit here, just so it dries more thoroughly. Anything above 70 degrees Fahrenheit and sunny, those are good days to dry, especially you get up into the 80s and 90s. If it's down in the 50s and 60s, it doesn't dry well. So this we're gonna dry today. I'll mix it a little more. This material right here is also unscreened but it's already dry enough to screen. Okay, we're about to begin screening, but there are a few things that I wanted to say first. This kind of screener is very inexpensive. It takes a long time to screen. It's not the most efficient, but you may have looked. Screeners can be $100,000 if they're used. It can be $500,000 and more if they're not. This one I got for $4,000 four or five years ago. They're still out there. They're not 4,000, but they're still not too bad. And it can get the job done. You can run a full business, small scale business like I do off of it. How it operates, electricity here. I'm gonna do it with the generator that I'll show you. That powers this vibratory motor, which will vibrate this screen. 
I will come with unscreened material with the skid steer and I'll bring up the bucket and put the tip end of the blade right on this top part and I can actually control how much of a slope this has as it's screening it. All the fines, fines, that's what we're gonna sell, that will fall through here. And the pieces that are too big are gonna continue to the other side. We call that the ovaries. You'll see me take the fines out as it fills up and put it on our product pile for sale. When the overs and the fines fill up, I'll take out the fines for product, and then I'll take the blade of this bucket. Right here, on this bucket, I've got a little knob, but on my old machine, I didn't, but I still was able to use the blade. I'll put it right here. I'll lift this end up maybe four inches, and then I'll pull the machine back. And that will give me room to continue the process. That's important because otherwise you have to keep going around the other side to push the overs out of the way. If you do that, it's going to take even longer. So you'll see that. Okay, like I said, I'll be using the uh, skid steer to fill it up with the vibrating motor on the screener, the generator that we power it with, and the skid steer. It's a lot of noise. I'm going to be wearing ear protection today. The material's not as dry as I want, but it can still be a pretty dusty operation. So I'll have this over my face. You should definitely, when you're screening, have something to protect yourself from dust. And uh, let me show you something on the other side really quick. This is what the other side looks like. Again, this screen will be vibrating, not violently shaking, just vibrating. The product will go through, but on this side, the bigger pieces will collect here. And again, it'll fill up here to where I can't just keep operating. That's why I'll pull it back. So eventually I'll have a long pile of overs here that will work back into the process at various stages. Okay, let's fire it up.
Okay, I wanted to stop the process for a little while now. We've put about 15 cubic yards, give or take, through the screener. About seven to eight of those cubic yards we got through the screener and have as product now. When I bring the, the bucket full of material up and I put the blade here, I just let a little bit out at a time, even shaking the bucket, just dribbling it out at a time. If I just dump it, a lot of it's, almost all of it's just gonna go to the overs. And I can lower this so it isn't so steep. You have to balance. The more you lower this, the more material goes through the screen. But the more you do that, you're gonna get more of these pieces of, of uh, wood, these coarser, bigger pieces. Now, these are okay. They're full of biology. I was gonna break that one. And, uh, and nutrients, but the customers don't want too much of that in there. So uh, watch as it goes through, make sure the quality's good, and make sure you're not dumping too much um, over the side. Okay, also I want to show you this side of the screen. We have uh, very clean material to work with, but even for us, the screener will, uh, will collect uh, contamination, and that's good. You don't want it in the product. Uh, we still will pick through the product a little bit. Now, in between screenings and sometimes even during screening, you're going to want to uh, clean this stuff off of there. Now, also, you see the screen has material building up on that. The wetter and stickier the material is, the higher the uh, moisture content, the more it will collect here. And if you find that you have to stop uh, to get out of your machine to clean this off uh, too many times, then it's not a good day to screen because it's just too wet. Now, if you need to clean this stuff off because it's clogging up every half hour or so, that's fine. Uh, but if you find like it's, uh, you know, every few minutes, then uh, you need to dry the material more. So yeah. Uh, this is what the overs look like. So again, the product goes through the screen and the bigger pieces come out the other side and you can see plenty of big pieces. Again, we even have brick from the surface we're working on, but most of it is uh, pieces of wood, uh, uh, little uh, bits of plastic and uh, uh, bone. Now also, you notice too, there's a lot of good uh, fine material. Again, our screener is not the most efficient, so that's too bad. But uh, my experience has been, if I run this material through the screener again to try and reclaim uh, that fine material, I get too much. I get too much of the big pieces. So what we do with our overs is we work it back into the process often at the very beginning when we get the food and we mix it with the leaves and the wood chips and we also like to use it as a cap on our aerated static pipe.